you very much for being here today. First, let me acknowledge I'm very uh, proud to be joined today by a number of distinguished leaders of the community, Rabbi Joseph Kutaznik, who is a longtime host of Revolution on the Line, besides being one of the leading rabbis in the city of New York, in the state of New York, Assemblyman and Roy Lasky from Queens, uh, who is a Democrat, and they emphasize that in the show. It's not a Republican or a Democratic issue. It's not even an Israeli issue we're talking about today. It's America. Also, have just recently felt been active in many uh, different administrations, especially uh, the government of Kentucky, the community here, and I want to thank all of them for uh, standing with me. I'm here today to officially announce the bill I've introduced in Congress, HR 5501, which is the America Stands with Israel Act. I believe we are at a defining moment in the relationship, not just between the United States and Israel, between Israel and, the, Israel and the world, and a defining moment as the signal that we are sending to other nations of the world, friend and foe, as to what our true relationship is with the people and the state of Israel. Uh, the whole crisis, the whole controversy involving the flotilla uh, crisis, to me, has just brought this to a head. It is absolutely unconscionable that Israel has been put on defense about this. Israel has the absolute right to defend itself. A blockade is a legitimate tool and method to be used by a country which is under siege. And the hypocrisy we see in the United Nations, many people in the media, and many people who are world leaders, who are quick to denounce Israel for defending itself. Now, I believe that the time has come for Congress to take a clear stand that we are with Israel, that we are in true solidarity with Israel. But it's not enough to have Congress, it's not enough to say, we love Israel and Israel loves us, and be silent on the underlying facts of the situation. So my legislation, besides affirming the family of the American relationship with Israel, has two specific provisions. Number one, it would require the United States to withdraw from the UN Human Rights Council. It would also cut off all American taxpayer funding for any investigation of Israel carried out by the United Nations. Now, why is it so important that we withdraw from the UN Human Rights Council? The UN Human Rights Council is bigoted, bias, anti-Israel, and anti-West. Of its last 40 decisions, 33 have gone against Israel. 83 percent of their last 40 decisions have involved Israel, and they've all gone against Israel. Now, they were the, uh, the uh, UN Human Rights Council last year, responsibly the Goldstone Report, which accused Israel of war crimes and hostile crimes against humanity for defending itself from Gaza. It was the UN Human Rights Council within days this incident where Turkey, a Turkish ship attempted to break through the blockade and use violence, denounced Israel, condemned Israel for its actions. So there's a clear bias here. And by the U.S. remaining on the U.N. Human Rights Council, we are giving a moral legitimacy to the United Nations Human Rights Council to not deserve. Right now, it's a moral and diplomatic imperative right thing to do is for the U.S. to withdraw from the U.N. Human Rights Council. And I don't think I have to explain why it's important that American honor and tax dollars not to use to finance and fund the UN investigation. So far, the legislation was introduced on Thursday. We have only 45 co sponsors. We want to get as many co sponsors as we can, Republican and Democrat, to make clear where the United States stands. I'm concerned uh, that the administration is not too forceful enough protecting the rights of Israel and somehow setting up a moral equivalency between Israel and its enemies. The United States is not a referee. We are not there to be on the We are who's an ally that's highly different. This is a friend, this is a democracy, this is our only true ally in the Middle East. We have to stand with Israel, we have to make it clear that we stand with Israel. So I'm calling on all members of Congress, Republican and Democrat, to endorse this legislation as quickly as possible. Thank you, thank you. 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 As a spokesperson uh, for people under attack, so thank you once again, Congressman King. Let me just say to you, if you want to know a defining description of the United Nations, this past week Iran was designated as a member of the Committee on the Status of Women. If that doesn't make that place an hypocrisy, I don't know what else does. So the work uh, you UN, I think also is a preference. It's unfair, it's unprincipled, and as you can see, it's increasingly un-American heard much in the past uh, week about humanitarian mission. The question many of us are asking is, you have Gilad Shalit, who's been held hostage, who's 
kid down here for four years, and we haven't heard a word from him. Where's the humanitarian concern? Any questions? Right, right. Yes. I'm trying to defeat it. 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 I'm trying to defeat it.